So how that procedures that the company would have Let's say you have you join the company, you have a department, they tell you, okay, uh, this is the outcome we're looking to get. Here's the uh, manual, how to. This is basically, you now own it, you run with it. So would you want them to follow the procedure or are you okay with them to explore other ways? So at the beginning, just like being any good manager, right? So if you're hired as a manager in a company, and you didn't come up through that company, you're going to come in and you're going to evaluate the procedures. You're going to have to do it the way that is written, right? Until you can go and you can take to the person who manages you and you can say, hey, I found a better way. Can we talk through it? Right? I can now do this 10-hour project in six hours no boss is ever going to say no to that as long as the outcome is correct and it is not a conflict with the other aspects of the business and that's i'm always looking for people who want to do more and want to do better and they they want to expand their skill set and then i want their opinion if they're if i'm not doing things in the most efficient way tell me how we can make them more efficient and that's an open door policy that i have with my entire team And I, I mean, I will tell you, I've had people with me, the same people with me 10 years, six years. I have virtual assistants who have been with me for many years. And then they've gone on to open their own businesses and given me virtual assistance from their businesses. So with business relationships is what it's all about, not only internally in your team, but also externally with your clientele, right? That's. Your goal across the board is for repeat everything and for relationships to have the biggest ROI they possibly can have. With clients, it's money. With um, money and time. And then with team, it's the amount of time that they spend with you and the amount amount of um, investment you make in their careers and in their knowledge. So making sure everybody gets uh, what they expect to satisfy. Interesting. See, right now also, I I see that uh, a lot of people just take it for granted and think that it was always that way, right? Where we hear a virtual assistants, where we hear things that done remotely. You started ten, a decade ago, right? 10 years ago. So at that time, there was no COVID. There was no Zoom, right? That it was not uh, as popular. I think Upwork just probably started to operate slightly over 10 years ago. I think it also transitioned through Elance or Desk. And Upwork got like was born out of that, right? So, how uh, did you come to that conclusion that it's not about having somebody physically present, position everything uh, remotely, and manage everything remotely? You'll uh, achieve a lot more and uh, be a lot more productive. It was a lot harder ten years ago. I mean, when I started this business, VA was Veterans Affairs. So whenever uh-huh. I couldn't say the word V or the, the acronym VA anywhere, because every, and like my company name is called my clone solution. They're like, what are you cloning? Yeah. Right. And I'm like, people, business owners, you know, have you ever wished you had a clone or you ever wished you had more than two hands? That's basically how I still describe my business. Even though people now know what a virtual assistant is, I have to be, a, I, I now I have to just set myself apart m- more from everybody all over the world that is into this world into the ba world they're working from home now right but yeah i was zooming before zoom was a household name i was spending at least 80 percent of my time doing business virtually even back at 10 years ago and when i started all of this so i did a lot of podcasts i did a lot of media i was of value a lot in facebook groups And that's how I got my clients all over. And really, in my world, it's being of value. People don't know what you have. And if you don't niche into your own little pocket, it's very difficult to explain to people what it is you do. People still now look at my website and they're like, you do so much. And I'm like, yes, I do. And they're like, well, can you just give us a list of everything you do? And I'm like, nope, because that's going to confuse you. I'm like, what's your problem? Let's solve a problem. And that's the next, I think the next place we go in this conversation is how do you grow and scale your business, right? It's not about 
you. It is all 100% about the problem, the person having the problem, and how you solve the problem. And then what that is worth to them is the price tag you put on it. And yes. that's growing and scaling. <laughs> yes. So let's get to that. Before we do, I wanted to touch on that. So what separates you or how different are you from a business consultant or business mentor, business coach? You actually have a team that is specializing in the different aspects of the business, right? You have a T team. Do you do also sales? Well, you do marketing. So for sales every is the only thing I don't do. You know, marketing and operations is pretty much where we live. So we will make your salespeople or you as a business owner look great feel great, have all the tools in order to do the sales job. And then we help you on the backside on operations to make sure that you can deliver with as much automation and delegation as possible. 